Returning to the hoop. This is the place where Bethany fed, fell head over heels for me. So I thought it was only right to show you the location. And to be fair, I had the same feeling towards her. But it was over here on this floor. But here's the thing, here's the trip. This is how not into me she actually was. She acts like she was, but it's like not. We were walking, come over here. I'm gonna show you the exact spot. And I'm saying- Whatever he says isn't true. What, what did you say? Huh? What? What'd you say? Okay, me saying, okay. The game happening? No, I know, I'm not, the game is cool. Cause this is what was happening too, there's a game happening. She was walking right through here at one point and I was walking back and she started walking. This is how it looked. There was no look back though, okay? So from there- I was playing hard to get. No, she wasn't. She was oblivious. She was oblivious because she'll do that. So she saw me the That's game before. Yes, she saw me the game before and fell in love. But then I walked right by her, right by her. What am I supposed to do? Be like the whole time? No. I do that. You didn't have to do that. You could stop. You could. No. You could play it out. Look, trash can. Put something in the trash. Do something. Yes, you could have. She just kept walking and kept. Okay, so you did see me then, right there. I don't remember. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But it all yeah, worked out. That's where we first and met. And this was the court, though, where we first met, right over there. She used to just yell at me and <laughs> tell me to put her brother in the game. And I anytime did. we didn't want to play I for did. him, I heard about it. That's and not, then she ended up getting people. She got the whole section against me eventually by like week two or three. That's the whole oh, section. Oh. They were saying stuff. This is all lies. Fire it's the coach. Lies. Fire the coach. Okay. Like, when you gonna fire the okay. fifth grade coach? Okay, Y'all are kind of brutal. But that was it. That's where it happened. Yeah. Thank you guys. Just wanted to take you on a slow walk. We're celebrating our anniversary. Yep, six years married. Moment he walked through the door, he had a, a duffel bag. It, it was like a... He was going to work. They have all these different specialized rooms for the kids and it was, been, it was great being in there, not only just to see it, but Trisha and Taya really broke down like all the purposes yeah. of that room. And you, you again see how much they think about the little things that the, the kids there have to learn. It's fun being back at the hoop. A little special <laughs> meaning to us. Uh, it's where we first met, and it's also where we had our wedding reception. Mm -hmm. And it was a place where before she and I even met, that's where I started working. That's what got me into youth basketball. That was my home. So going back to the hoop is always a good thing. Mm -hmm. But today, we're going back to meet this organization that we've communicated with. We've heard a lot of good things about. We've seen from a distance, whether it be them at Trailblazer Games doing their yeah. thing on the floor at halftime or before a game, or some other way. And uh, man, they, they like exceeded my expectations yeah, in terms was... of what they offer and what they do and how big this tournament yeah, was. They're having was so a cool. tournament Full today. Tournament. Yeah. yeah, they're hosting, they're the home site. Mm -hmm. And we just got to go in there and watch, you know, all the games. <laughs> they were hooping for real. Yeah, you, they you, were, were, like... <laughs> you were really, you were like, you saw the screen. Like, I didn't see them set the screens no, at first because I don't see the same things you see when I watch. We're watching the same game, but we see things differently. I just literally follow the ball. And you were like, wait, they're like setting screens. Yeah, they and were we setting found screens. Out later, they were cutting. We found out later that the um, the chair is part of the body in with the sport. So, like, when they're setting a screen, like, you really can't move. Like, it is legit. And they, yeah, they were full on running plays, everything. It was passing, so doing cool. drills, they're doing warm up drills, like pass, pass, pass. And the back. hoop is at 10 feet. Yes, and, and the, they are the shooting from the, the court, chair. It, it is the same length. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It it's was, you could just tell these are, are real athletes real. At, out there playing. So oh, he blocked it. <laughs> So I wonder, like, they're, they're like racing to get down there. Watch, watch the hooper. He's moving. He went down. Set up. Yeah, he set up off the screen. He set up off the screen. Hey, that's good offense. That actually was. That's good offense. Did you see what he did? Well, 13 was good too. He, because he spun around to trick them, and then he just threw. He gave the pass without even like looking really. He actually 
actually got to talk to a parent of, of someone mm -hmm. who um, was playing and it was really good for me to hear her first because she was like, if someone falls, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> because I probably would have yelled yeah. or just been like, oh, you know, yeah. a little bit because I think I just naturally would have had that reaction. And she's like, just like in um, when you see Blazers or a professional team or anyone playing basketball, you fall, your, your teammates help you get up and you keep playing. Keep and that's over. just the same thing that you should expect when you're watching the wheelchair basketball teams play. Okay, oh, hey, Kayla, how you doing? <laughs> nice to meet person. you. Yeah, likewise, likewise. So this, you really busy today, bouncing around quite a bit? I mean, the day is busy, but I got time. Okay, okay. okay. So Jen is our interim executive director right okay. now. We got a chance to sit down first and watch and see what was happening, but it became extremely helpful once we talked to Caitlin and Ajin. Yeah. And they broke everything down for us. They really told us who Adaptive Sports Northwest is, what their purpose is, why they do it. I thought um, it was really great hearing from Jen, who mm -hmm. is blind. Yeah. And she just spoke about how that happened and how life has been since that and, and the purpose of Adaptive Sports has served in her life. You know, ironically, basketball was what I was supposed to go to college on, uh, but I lost my vision as a teenager. Mm -hmm. So I got introduced to really adaptive sports um, from an angle of a participant to start with. Um, and then, like I said, I coached and, and did different things. Uh, you know, I coached able-bodied sports as well as adaptive sports. Um, I was a participant on the U.S. team and different things, but even in college, informally, like I said, I had a friend down the hall that was an incomplete quad um, that said, you know, hey, you're going to the gym every morning and working out, I want to go too. And I'm like, sweet, let's do it, you know? And like I said, I started, unfortunately, Velcroing, or started duct taping my friend to things, um, you know, with, with grip strength. And I, you know, I, I, I progressed after that to Velcro. So it's always been a passion of mine just get folks involved in sports and recreation because I knew for me what it did for me as a kid, as an adult, you know, from the time management piece to the socialization piece. Yeah. And, and that's been really, I mean, my passion. I've been in, in it for about 30 years now. Yeah. Um, it's just getting folks involved. And kids are, are, are pretty near and dear to my heart. Because um, I just think that those lessons that you learn from sport, rather again, it's time management, it's teamwork, it's cooperation, it's communication. Totally. The camaraderie is, is huge for everyone. And, yeah. and and fortunately, you know, kids with disabilities, a lot of times you're you're not even able to go compete on your five on five basketball mm -hmm. team. Yeah. Or foot your wheelchair use, you're not gonna go out on the football field. Mm -hmm. So they need those same life lessons uh -huh. um, and things. And then or if you're an adult or it's acquired or, or different things, why not have that socialization, right? You have yeah. your beer league, right? And yeah. everything yeah. else. Yeah. So even if it's a recreational type thing, it's important for that, that social and what's cool about adaptive sports, you know, at this level, you know, they have to have, um, you know, whatever the impairment is, the different things. But the cool thing is, from a recreational standpoint, you can play it with your friends. Yeah. You can play it with those sort of things and, yeah. and level the playing field a little bit, right? She has that love of sport. You can tell she has that competitive yes. nature in her. And adaptive sports is one of those places where it's like you don't have to give up on a love of basketball mm -hmm. or another sport that you have because there might be a visual impairment mm -hmm. or, or another kind of disability that it is still possible mm -hmm. and it can empower you and there is a group and a community that you can surround yourself with to where you can all take part in this love of whatever sport it might be. The, the bigger changes you're going to see really um, with wheelchair sports versus standing basketball right is going to be the chairs part of the body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're talking about fouls and things like that. But you have the shot clock, you have you know, the three seconds in the lane, you have all the same rules as you have for standing basketball. Okay. Everything is sort of, it's, it's the same thing. Um, so there's really not a lot of adaptations, right? Obviously traveling double dribble looks a little different, yeah, you know, because yeah. it's, yeah. it's the push rule, so it's, it's two pushes on your rims. Oh, and you either gotta so pass that's or shoot. the rule. Correct, so you either have to pushes. dribble, pass or whatever, you know, two touches. Yeah, two, yeah, two okay. touches okay. is all you can have. Yep. Okay. Yep. It's so hard. That's, yeah, it's yeah. hard tracking travel rules. So yeah. in the, Those I, I work in the two. NBA and they travel all the time. Yeah. So I, know, I don't, don't know what is and yeah. what is. Exactly. Yeah. The two push rule. I might actually say two, that. Yeah. So it's Somebody a, travels. Those I'm are the two, two biggest push. things that you got to remember: is the two pushes is the difference, yeah. and then that the chair is part of the body. Yeah. Chair is yeah. part of the body. Yes. Now, one of the parents was telling us that um, these chairs are different than what she called a daily chair yeah. because yeah. of the wheels. The wheels yeah. are out of camber, so it's an angle. They can spin faster. It's a different. Push. It's also a little more stable yeah. because the oh. base is wider. Yeah. And so it was important having a guy that was set up in the corner mm -hmm. with his company there to help 
anybody who needed any fixing with their daily wheelchairs. Hi, my name is Lionel. I'm with Promobile. Today we're here at the basketball tournament and uh, Promobile donated some parts uh, to help work on personal chairs for individuals so that way they keep going. And we're also doing a little raffle for some free sets of wheels as well. So I'm not just working on basketball chairs, but I'm working on the everyday, all day uh, personal chairs. You know, keep them going throughout the day, get them going to school, get them going to work, just keeping, keeping their chairs uh, maintained and maintenance and keep them going. Ooh, one hand. Offensive board. Good pass. Oh, that's good defense. I'll see you that defense. Cutting. They really are. Wait, hey, this team is Dean up. That was so that was intense. Like, it was, I, yeah, that it was, was intense. intense. Yeah. See all these different age groups, and then there are options for men and for women, um, so that you can start at a young age and get involved. And then as a as a kid, you can see, okay, I can continue to do this up until you know I'm an adult, and then it just kind of. Um, continues the relationship there between youth and adults um, and it was really really cool to see.